Nerve and glial cells in the brain maintain very low resting calcium level and this enables them to use rapid calcium elevations as a trigger for their key functions such as neurotransmitter release. Now resting calcium level is not just a reflection of the local calcium homeostasis machinery, it actually effectively determines the amount of free calcium buffers available locally, which in turn controls the waveform of transient calcium rises. The classical way to monitor extra low calcium levels relies on ratiometric calcium indicators. This method, however, has not been feasible in organized brain tissue simply because light absorption and scattering in such media strongly depend on the wavelength. We have therefore turned to the fluorescence lifetime imaging. Its readout does not depend on the amount or concentration of the dye, light absorption, scattering or photobleaching. Fluorescence lifetime is the intrinsic property of the 404. So each 404 is absorbed energy which excites it from the ground state to the excited state by the two photon laser. And there's a slight delay as, as energy relaxes in the 404, which then re-emits the photon back into the ground state. And that takes time, and that duration normally is a few nanoseconds for orange green baptor 1. It depends whether the calcium binds to it or not, this process could be delayed, which introduce uh, our method, which is measuring this delay time to give us an idea how many calciums are present in the solutions. So the fluorescence lifetime is independent of the concentration of the dye and it's independent of the laser excitations and it's also independent mostly to pH, zinc and magnesium as we have calibrated. You start with zero calcium solutions which is quenched by a large amount of BAPTA and then you gradually add high calcium solutions by solution replacement. Each of them will have a unique decay time which we can build our calibration curve from. Once you obtain the calibration curves, any recording you get from acute slices or in vivo will produce a normalized total count map from which then you can use the calibration curve to convert that into a calcium heat map. So we use the hippocampal uh, acute slices and field neurons and astrocytes with the calcium indicator Oregon Green Bapta 1 to monitor basal calcium levels. So the first striking observation was that neurons maintain a much lower basal uh, level than astrocytes. So this approach is also validated and applied in vivo. After injection of membrane permeable OGB1AN and sulfurodamine 101 into somatosensory cortex, we perform lifetime imaging as before to an acute cranial window in anesthetized, ventilated sprague dolly rats. We successfully applied lifetime imaging of calcium in both astroglia and layer 2 3 neurons. Our measurements recapitulated what was seen in vitro Neurons and astroglia maintain differing levels of basal calcium. There are sustained calcium gradients within astroglia of the somatosensory cortex. Finally, basal calcium levels appear to divide the astroglia population into two subgroups. In neuronal dendrites, the basal calcium levels are unevenly distributed between dendritic spines. And although the landscapes are maintained over the course of minutes, uh, they display some activity-dependent plasticity. So if you apply some brief burst of action potential, this leads to a reduction of basal calcium levels in neuronal dendrites and especially in dendritic spines. And although FLIM is a slow technique because of the number of uh, cycles that are required to collect enough photons to, to get a measurement, we managed to, get some, to measure some fast calcium dynamics in neurons with a 10 millisecond temporal resolution. So we compared the intensity measurement and the film readout of the calcium signal elicited by a train of backpropagating action potentials. And the film readout proves advantageous for two reasons. First, it directly provides the calcium concentration values. And second, it relates linearly to the frequencies, unlike the intensity measurement, which rapidly saturate. Now, the film based technique that we have adapted has unveiled an unexpectedly rich content of calcium landscapes and neurons and astrocytes. Whether such landscapes contain information about the past activity of local networks and whether they set some functional modalities to various cells and their microscopic compartments remains an important and intriguing question.